everyone. Welcome back to Real Life. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you enjoy these vintage episodes, please hit the like button. That helps promote them to like-minded viewers like yourself. Consider subscribing and you'll be notified of new episodes. Members get early previews. There's something new and different every weekend. If you're interested in vintage films and videos specifically from Ontario, there are many episodes waiting for you to discover, some as far back as the 1920s. You can find them on the interactive map guide located in the details below. This episode is a vibrant 16mm film captured by Vancouver-based Imre Michalik in the fall of 1973 and is one of those interesting rabbit hole episodes that likely is to beg more questions as we'll see. It focuses on Bon Echo Provincial Park, more specifically on a unique feature, Mazinaw Rock. Bon Echo Provincial Park is located in southeastern Ontario, approximately 6 kilometers north of Cloyne. The park is within township boundaries of both North Frontenac and Addington Highlands, roughly separated by Highway 41. Bon Echo features several lakes, including Bon Echo Lake, Joe Perry Lake along Rainy Creek, and part of Mazinaw Lake, the seventh deepest lake in Ontario. The southeastern shore of Mazinaw Lake features the massive 100 meter high or 330 foot high Mazinaw Rock, an escarpment rising out of the water adorned with many First Nation pictographs. Nana Bazoho, a trickster from Ojibwe legend and cultural hero, is the unofficial mascot of Bon Echo Park. He is featured prominently in pictographs adorning the sides of the rock escarpment on Mazinaw Lake. While the use of Nana Bazo through traditional storytelling among Ojibwe can be for entertainment, it is often used to pass down information and general life lessons. If you're interested, there's much more published about Nanabozo online. It's quite fascinating. Mazinaw Rock and the surrounding area are sacred places for First Nations peoples. 263 pictographs or rock paintings attest to the power of the place and the spirits living here. The pictographs are reddish to reddish orange in color and are a few feet above the waterline. Thought to be records of visions or dreams, images of turtles, canoes and thunderbirds and spirits may be seen. The symbolism of other images remains a mystery, only known to the painters themselves. The site of the Mazinaw pictographs was designated a National Historic Site of Canada in 1982. Artists including members of the Group of Seven, such as Franklin Carmichael, A.J. Kaysen and Arthur Lismer, were inspired by Mazinaw Rock and its surroundings. Some members of the Group of Seven made several visits in the 1920s and 30s at the invitation of Merrill Denison. He knew them from the Arts and Letters Club at the University of Toronto. Until the turn of the century, Bon Echo's story was much like that of other parts of the Canadian Shield. First Nations members came thousands of years ago to hunt and fish. The French explored the area and the English began to settle it in the 19th century. Then the lumbermen came, followed by farmers, to keep them provisioned. Towards the end of the century, the lumbermen moved elsewhere, the farms failed, and the population decreased. In 1956, Kay McCormick, Marnie Gilmore, David Fisher, and Alan Bruce Robertson paddled across Mazinaw Lake in a canoe on the Saturday of the Labor Day weekend and climbed a rock outcropping subsequently named Birthday Ridge. On Sunday, Marnie's birthday, they climbed the front of the pinnacle. This marked the first rock climbing on Mazinaw Rock. The Alpine Club of Canada maintains a hut on the lake and Bon Echo rock climbing remains core to the ACC's Toronto section to this day. It's unknown what connection this group of scuba divers has to the rock climbers. However, the lack of dry suit or even wetsuit suggests the water temperature must have been quite pleasant. These double hose regulators have not been used in decades and rubber masks and fins have long been replaced by more pliable silicone gear. It doesn't appear they are even using buoyancy compensation devices, or BCDs, or depth gauges. Today's recreational divers employ dive computers with integrated gauges and far more advanced equipment with redundant safety systems. It's easy to forget that in 1973, recreational scuba diving had only been in existence for a mere 23 years. It was, of course, largely due to the post-war exploits of Jacques Cousteau and his dive companions that the sport became popular. A Guide to Rock Climbs at Bon Echo, authored by Stephen W. Adcock and David R. Brown, documents that Imre Michalik filmed at least two routes along the Mazinaw Rock. 
Number 93, Ease Way Up, a 5-0 climb. And number 112, the present estate of Pompeii, a more challenging 5-9 route. I suspect this may possibly be the footage referenced from the book. It remains to be confirmed by those who were there that day. If this indeed is the case, this could be Helmut Mikroys and Ruth Lister making this footage historically significant. This is that interesting part of the rabbit hole I alluded to. Who are these climbers? Are they individuals quoted in Adcock and Brown's book? What about the scuba divers? Mazinaw Lake averages 41 meters or 135 feet in depth with a maximum depth of 145 meters or 476 feet, making it the seventh deepest lake in Ontario. The divers appear to have been diving the rock wall. My experience with diving suggests that a rock wall dive likely offers some spectacular sights. What freshwater creatures and plants inhabit the wall? The hydrographic charts confirm a steep wall that descends far below recreational dive limits to about 320 feet. This footage, captured more than a half century ago, clearly shows the advancements made in climbing gear. Rock climbing is a demanding sport. Cinematography presents its own sets of technical challenges. Combining these two demonstrates serious skill sets that few mortals have, but Imre certainly excelled at. What makes this more interesting is that outside of a very small group of people, it's quite likely this footage has not been viewed in decades. Like the fascinating automobile barn finds of recent years where rare cars like pre-war Mercedes-Benzes or 1950s Maseratis and Faisal Vegas have been discovered after decades in dusty warehouses, this film was among 70 16mm reels and several 8mm reels discovered in an abandoned storage locker previously rented by Imre in the Lower Mainland in BC. After both he and his wife Yvette passed away in the last decade, the locker was forgotten and eventually its contents auctioned off sight unseen. For the new owners, there was little interest in what appeared to be family home movies, and I was fortunate to purchase the reels from the buyer of the storage unit and offer them a new home. I had no idea what I had purchased, and assumed they were ordinary home movies of birthdays and family gatherings, with perhaps a few interesting vacation reels in the mix. Instead, I was gobsmacked when I realized the subject matter and quality of these reels. Imre was no ordinary average photographer. He was good. Very good and the subjects of his films were intriguing. Vancouver, Calgary, and Toronto city scenes. The Calgary Stampede in 1973, the 1964 Winter Olympics in Innsbruck, Austria, and skiing throughout BC, and much more. The reels were perfectly preserved with no deterioration. I was able to successfully scan some of them before my film scanner failed this summer. There are some 50 more unviewed metallic reels, some that may include more climbing footage. I look forward to scanning them with the soon-to-arrive 4K scanner this winter. Not all storage locker finds end with this level of success. I have found some in the past that were simply too far gone with horrible vinegar syndrome, heavy mildew, or films so brittle that it simply crumpled to the touch. I can only imagine how much irreplaceable amateur film has been lost to time. Fortunately, these amazing reels will live on. I'm honored to be the current caretaker and will preserve these for future generations to enjoy. You can learn more about Imre Michalik and episodes featuring his footage on the community page on my channel. As for this rock climbing, what an experience would have been to be belayed on a safe spot on the rock wall capturing this footage above a beautiful lake on a delightful summer afternoon. Understanding the potential historical significance of this footage, it's a likely candidate to rescan in 4K in 2025. I look forward to solving these unanswered questions and learning more details from you, the viewers, wherever you are. As always, leave your comments in the comments section so others can collaborate. I look forward to your feedback. Share this film with colleagues and friends. Perhaps someone will be recognized from that late summer day all those years ago.
Thank you to all my Patreon supporters, members, donors, and subscribers. It's a pleasure producing these fascinating little vignettes for you. If you really enjoyed this episode, hit the thanks button, as this will contribute to the 4K film scanner that arrives in December. Imagine what this footage will look like rescanned in 12-bit 444 RAW. With your support, the 4K upgrade project will be a reality this coming January. The Film Fabric HDS Plus scanner will amaze you with its 4K resolution and significant improvements in color and detail. Have a great day, be kind, and we'll see you again next time on Real Life.